So, um, this is my FMP idea. Two Britons, two stories, two societies. So, what the hell is two Britons? Um, basically, I am creating a documentary, um, kind of investigating on why the nation is divided, as we all know, because of Brexit. We've all seen the news, the nation at the moment is just divided, and to be honest, it's a mess. Which is, yeah. um, the story of two nationals. So I'm going to be um, following the stories of two British citizens that lived here in the UK, one from down here and one from the Midlands. So I'll be filming in both places. I'll be filming in the Midlands, and I'll be filming down here in Torbay. Um, the first subject is the story of Mohammed Kiranawi. He's a male Muslim British Jordanian national in his late 30s. Um, he's trying to make a living in the UK through doing sewing fashion business in Torquay. Um, the problems he faces that we will explore in the documentary will be his alcohol abuse. He's got an alcohol problem that he's currently trying to tackle. Racism and um, the struggle of trying to raise a family in another country, which is in Jordan. Um, the second subject is the story of Sandy Mathari, a Sikh 17-year-old British Indian national living in Coventry, East Midlands. She is a college student with a troubled past, struggling with family issues and religious issues. Um, and she faces challenges and dangers of living in a British city that wouldn't normally be, um, wouldn't normally happen down here in Torbay. Um, a past is faced with problems of domestic violence, drugs, and an ongoing battle with mental health. Um, so how different is the rest of the country to the Southwest? So as we all should be grateful for, we do live in a quiet, safe area of the country, which will be lucky to live down here. Um, my research has allowed me to explore what it actually is like in the rest of the country. So crime-wise, we have a map here. Um, the north, uh, places like East Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, and um, Manchester, as well as the Midlands, is um, quite notorious for crime. Um, you can see the north-south divide is uh, highlighted through the crime map. Um, so crime, through, through research, I've found out that crime in these areas is, uh, can, be, can be fueled by many factors, such as um, trying to develop a male or female dominance amongst the crowd of friends, that can be done through alcohol abuse or drug abuse. Um, it's a lot more common in other parts of the country just simply because the population is a lot more larger than um, the small communities that you get down here. Um, and it's important that I do understand that um, so I can understand the context to why their stories are the way they are. Uh, if I, if it wasn't for research, um, I would have some problems trying to represent that in the documentary. But because of research, I can now represent that. Um, so showing the contrast, furthermore expanding the difference. Obviously, you can just visually see it's very different. Um, so that is clearly typical British um, neighbourhoods and. Um, British cities compared to the local communities that we live uh, in down here. Very much more smaller, more content. Um, so the type of documentary that we'll be making, this will be a poetic and reflective documentary. Um, reflective basically is a type of documentary where it relies more on suggestion rather than fact. A reflective documentary is more likely to use fiction-based techniques from the motive and subjective response. Poetic is kind of the way you use shots to convey a message to your audience, um, which I will be using quite a lot in the documentary. 
Um, there's more of an artistic and abstract, abstract expression. Mostly in a montage style sort of way. Um, I think that suits me quite a lot because I'm just, I'm used to editing and filming into more of a montage kind of way. I've done it for quite a while now, so I'm quite confident with um, kind of creating in a poetic style of documentary. Um, so, how will two Britons be structured? Um, now, believe it or not, that is my script. It's quite difficult to script a documentary because documentary is, well, most of the time it's, it's, not, it's unscripted, isn't it? So, so what I've done is a timeline which kind of shows the structure of what the documentary will look like. Um, like. Most likely this will be edited and changed over time. That is the reality of it. So for the moment, um, as you can see, the way you read this, it is color coded through the colored bars. So obviously the red is segments of cinematics, orange is segments of role play, um, and then the two blues is just to represent um, the two interviews that are going on. Um, the writing that is on the script or the timeline is to describe what, what, each, what each of the colours are going to be like um, so I can get a visual representation um, when looking back. It can be used as a guideline to follow. Uh, so what will Two Britons actually look like? So I've kind of, well, I've experimented with my own film style, um, which has been influenced by other people um, through using key practitioners, um, key, pr key practitioner that I've used, as I've mentioned many times before, Sam Calder, um, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. Uh, I like the way he uses transitions to kind of make the image on the screen flow. Um, I like that style. He's, even though it is a lot of the shots are fast paced, it still feels slow paced, which is a very hard thing to picture in your head. Um, and isn't something that is traditionally used in film quite a lot. So by using this um, style, I hope to kind of differentiate my documentary from other documentaries. So here's some examples. Hopefully I can play the film. Some examples of my previous work, which I hope to implement. So I've been used use the um, use of hyperlapses, which is basically stop motion. So there's some examples that was taken in Budapest, and the previous one was taken in Turkey. Um, and the style of uh, transitions that I'll be using in the documentary will be as follows. Um, actually, pretty simple to create, um, but these. These transitions that are simple to create give quite an uh, impressive look to the documentary, which um, I hope to continue. Um, so that is, yeah, it's really faded. That is my um, storyboard. Uh, again, um, a lot of the documentary, when filming the cinematic, this film, filming the cinematics, will be kind of freestyled. And I, thi I, I think it's important that I do that, uh, do, do it in that way, because um, you can't really script society. You've got to film things as it happens. You can't just, um, what well, you can in short films and so forth. But in a documentary, I think it's, um, it's important to stick to uh, keeping it real. Uh, so that's why I've decided to film in freelance. But, as I said, this is a good guideline to give me a sort of feel and look um, to what the documentary is going to look like. Um, so, here are just some images to kind of show um, the kind of shots, the kind of look that I will be going for. Some of these um, images have been taken from the documentary Black Sheep. Um, I use this as a key practitioner, and uh, overall, I was very influenced through the use of colours that was used within documentary. You can tell it's a very blue, um, kind of dark feel to the picture, 
and that kind of gives like a gritty reality, which is important if I'm giving a gritty reality to what the UK is actually like. Um, production schedule. So again, like that's going to change. Um, so I've given a lot of time into editing. In fact, I've given myself almost a month because I, I know myself, I'll probably take ages to edit. Um, so I'm going to give a lot of my time in editing. Um, target audience wise, um, I think through the research that I have conducted, um, a lot of the target audience will be 17, 18, and 19 year olds, so the higher, uh, older teenagers. But as well as that, um, people in the late 40s and early 50s will be watching this, more in um, urban areas, in bigger, in bigger cities. Um, also people that have inter uh, internet access are more likely to watch my documentary, as um, documentaries are, um, they are growing on the internet quite a lot recently for the use of social media, which I have also found out through my research. Um, so, two Britons, two stories of two people living in two different areas of the UK. Topic question, is the UK more divided than we think? That is it.